I am a theater director based in、uh, Beijing, China, and I'm visiting、uh, Oslo、uh, on this artist in residence program arranged by、uh, Safe Muse. Chong. Hey, Len. Ah,、oh, nice meeting you. <laughs> Very nice meeting you too. Welcome here to the city hall of Oslo. I'm an actress primarily, but. I've also been head of the National Theatre, artistic director at the National Theatre for ten years, to get all together.、Mm -hmm. And I've been Minister of Culture for one and a half year, fighting for the importance of cultural dialogue, and that's what we are having. And been working very hard to establish and develop the Ibsen Festival. Did you work with Ibsen? We did Ghosts 2.0. Basically, it's a A performance set in contemporary China. We used、uh, Ibsen's ghosts to、uh, examine, you know, what are the、uh, counterpart situations and characters in contemporary China. In Chinese theater, you know, it's very difficult to face the harsh situation in general, and people do not want to face it, and、uh, the regulations、uh, do not want you、uh, face it or to be critical in any sense. Uh, culture is not to be critical in many people's views, but I wanted to be critical. The imagery, the uh, 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 symbolism we had on the stage, were so shocking. It's、uh, it said a lot of uh, uh, direct things that I wouldn't uh, dare uh, to say、uh, in this conversation. You do say it aloud with uh, body, with uh, uh, the set. Uh, in combination with a poetic、uh, text, you know, self censorship is everywhere.、Yeah. You you want to you know censor yourself before it reaches your boss, and the boss also censors before it goes to the public. Then through the、uh, layers and layers of、uh, self censorship,、uh, what's to be shown to the audience actually would be reduced. <laughs> so it's, sometimes、uh, it's a game to be played with your audience and censorship. It's a complicated,、mm -hmm. you know, net work of meanings. So、uh, you wanna be safe in front of the censorship, and you also wanna be understood、yeah. by your audience, which is not an easy job. Have to you know hide your things、uh, somewhere. Uh, but people still can get it. I think it's great that we have this conversation just in this、uh, town hall of Oslo,、yeah. where、uh, our female mayor invited us for coffee before we had this talk. Yeah, and she's much supporting the freedom of speech and、uh, this、um, system of dialogue.、Uh, in China, you would never expect to meet. Uh, the former minister of culture and the current、uh, city mayor、uh, in a, uh, you know face-to-face -face,、uh, manner.、Uh, you know, it's only us,、uh, not a huge、uh, meeting where you know the the mayor greets a hundred artists.、Uh, I see, you know, I see a, a human in here. You know, my knowledge of、uh, government、uh, buildings is that it wants to. Keep away from its people. You know, people are afraid of the government, and the government is afraid of its people. Then <laughs> you do not want to put the two things together to complicate、uh, situations. Then you know, <laughs> here it seems very accessible, and、uh, nobody is afraid of anybody. That's、uh, that itself is very impressive for me. And also this uh, uh, portrait. Of the king,、yeah. uh, sort of、uh, surprised me because、uh, obviously it's not in a, a straightforward, realistic style,、uh, and uh, with a face、uh, in shadow and in、uh, a not so、uh, straightforward、uh, way of being handsome. You know, I was just surprised that this kind of work could be commissioned and displayed.、Uh, In such a formal way, they would be considered blasphemy, you know,、yeah. uh, an insult to the royal family <laughs> in some countries. So this definitely shows, you know, a, the appreciation of、uh, artistic values,、uh, alternative styles, 
And also the, the freedom of artistic expression. This is Absolutely. just unthinkable for me. But people in Norway discuss these paintings as well. They, some people don't like them, think the king looks not, not like that, and he is much more beautiful. And, but the king and queen themselves, they really appreciate artistic uh, view also on them. You can tolerate different styles. Yeah. You can tolerate, you know, different opinions. When people don't disagree, they say it out loud, and you also uh, talk about your opinions out loud. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what we call a society. You know, uh, I want to quote uh, the uh, now national hero, uh, Dr. Li Wenliang. For dying, he said this, um, a healthy society should have more than one voice. You know, that's, uh, that, that, that's maybe common sense to some countries, but uh, that's what we uh, need in some others. And tolerance is extremely important in all aspects. Tolerance of being different, different sexes, different meanings, different people, old and young, and that's, that's what it, it's all about in the end. Yeah, totally. You know, I do not speak whatever I want, even if I'm in Oslo, because uh, there could be consequences if I uh, go back to China, uh, especially, you know, I'm a, a bit afraid of saying things out loud in front of the camera. I guess in some countries in the world, uh, the risk is just simply too high, uh, not only for the activists and artists, but for anybody to speak out in any forms. And freedom of speech is the basic for everything. You want to create new stuff, you want to be innovative, provocative, uh, you need freedom. You need, uh, you need the, the free space where you can wonder and think and challenge um, and criticize. That's the very basics of creating arts. You have to have that first. Then maybe uh, the result is uh, you come up with something completely new, or maybe uh, you come up with something not so interesting. But the first and form foremost, you have to have something that sets you free. All right. Yeah. I'm from the first generation of Norwegian extreme metal. So um, my first band was uh, Cadaver, which was uh, releasing its debut album in 1990. So that means we did that before you guys were born. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like growing up in Iran, and how did you get into music? I grew up in a family that actually my father was a kind of type of religious guy but uh, and my mom was into music and so there been a little bit of struggle there for me always but uh, at the same time my father was a fan of traditional music like Persian traditional music so I've been seeing my father like playing instrument and all of that but since I grew up my most biggest impact that made me to get into this music was Nick I grew up in a middle class family that art was very important in it. Like, 
And, and my dad was a like rock music fan, Pink Floyd and Jimi Hendrix, and and I used to listen to them with him. And the first time that I heard it, it just got me like I was like, I don't know what they're doing, man, but I just want to do this. So I just begged my mom to please buy me drums, and she was like, Are you kidding me? We're living in an apartment, and it's just too loud. So it's just second best thing was playing guitar. <laughs> Yeah. That's the magic. <laughs> when I was growing up, shows we wouldn't play in normal venues. There was no venues that would allow music like this. So, so it was very underground. There was a very different environment also for us in Norway. The topic in school, which now is all kinds of religions and ethics and stuff, now they will learn about uh, everything. Mm. But we had to pray in the morning mm. and sing songs uh, to praise God. Yeah. And when we left school, we had to praise God again. And uh, this upbringing certainly led me faster into being anti religion yes. than anything else. Now, this is the thing with religious oppression. This is the fact that, for example, Islamic Republic of Iran doesn't understand that religious oppression makes people to lose their religious religion faster. Even the people who believe in it, like deeply or pure or for no kind of like pretending or hypocrisy, even they lose it as well. So at what point did you realize that what you were doing was uh, leading you to trouble in your country? The music that we're making with the approach that we have, which was political and like very criticizing against organized religion, we knew that it's very risky and we knew that one day we'll meet with the authorities. So our music was very like, like talking about the stuff that's happening in our society. In 2015, after we released our second album, In Pursuit of Dreams, the, the music that we make has a political theme in it, most of the songs. So it didn't really sit well with the government, so of course they showed up. I was at home, it was eight in the morning. I was arrested in, inside of our house, they had warrants and everything, and waiting for a trial. And in our first trial, they gave us six years, maximum sentence for blasphemy and something that would be interpreted as doing propaganda against the state through our music. And I was 21 back then, I was 19. Mm. So Evan Prison is not a, it's pretty notorious. Mm. It's basically a place that the government uh, keeping the politicals, but still we were like going through this and we stopped music and everything because we had bigger things to fight for, which was our freedom. Long story short, we were in uh, solitary confinement for three months. And then we were transferred to the public sector of prison. We were there for another 15 months and waiting for a trial. So we were released temporarily from jail. So I, I, I left Iran, I, I was living in Turkey and I came to Norway in December of 2018, seven months after me. Arash also came over, and, uh, and while we were here, they gave me 12 years and six months in jail, so they doubled up my sentence from six to 12 years and a half, plus 74 lashes with additional charges. Especially nowadays, artists are very important to, to support this movement and just give it all they have. Just be the voice for voiceless. People just want to live. They just want the regime to, to be gone. The circle of, of, of tyranny just became like tighter. And it's just really hard for people to stand that. So yeah, people are protesting. Our generation and the generation after us are the, are the ones that are really doing it in the streets. The revolution is not a project, it's a process. So it takes time.
sometimes I've played with people that I have no language in common with, and then we can still play together, and this form of communication is uh, something that really touches me. My mother was singing always, and she was in love with music, but she didn't know that. She was working, uh, cooking and cleaning, and she didn't know uh, that she can be a great singer. So I grew up with this folk music, and singing is not difficult for me, but singing in my uh, language, this is Hazara song, it's uh, difficult to singing that kind of music because my mother was like, no. And I have to question why no? And then when I was like adult, I'm thinking that she just wants to survive us. As a Hazara, we are under the pressure. And there is like 200 years that we are under the genocide. So we had a dark story. دلم می گفتم ما این سخن باور نمی کردم به وفای من از آن دل بر نمی دلم می گفتم ما این سخن باور نمی کردم As a Muslim, at that time I chose to be a singer. If I go to hell, that's okay. When I couldn't say to my family that I'm doing guitar classes, it was hidden. You know, I hadn't any place to put my guitar in. One day my father broke that guitar. Oh, he broke it. Yeah. And my father didn't talk with me about that. No. no. Mm -hmm. I have always thinking about that. What if, if I had a family that they support me about music, you know? I, I didn't have that experience, and I have not still that experience. What made you have to leave Afghanistan and come here? I heard lots of news that they are targeting uh, activists, and they are killing journalists and uh, artists. And there is one journalist woman who was working in the government and she told that I'm in a dangerous situation. So I just thinking that if I living here, they will killing me. I'm just um, very impressed about of how strong you are. And yeah. I don't feel that I'm strong. I just thinking that we have uh, lots of women that are living still in Afghanistan that uh, they don't lose uh, their hope and it's so it's so difficult right now to live in there as a woman because uh, all politi politicians mm -hmm. uh, that they are right now trying to normalize living with um, Taliban. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always thinking as a Afghan female, you have nothing to lose. If women just think, just have time to sit and think about these things, they can understand that they are, they are full, they are, you know, inside of manipulating controlship from patriarchy, mm -hmm. censorship, and they, they have nothing, you know. I think as a, as a woman who grew up in Afghanistan, they even cannot about the dreams, you know. And it, it's unbelievable. Yaki rabaro yamasha, basalib me kashandi. Yaki rasi ahdi di, yaki rasafet khandi. Hamashar ha yohubu, yaki rasi mslatubu. How do you feel you can use your art to to do? Do you feel you have any power to do something? I think art has a power. 
I just want to make that music that people know that there is something that we are not talking about that I don't want to censor that I want to show these things but I want to have effect and influence in other people yeah you know this is that's what I want I want to say something tell something that they are they are hiding they are taking from us they are distracting us you know people want voices that are true and that are not making compromises I can be a singer because they can take my voice and my thoughts and my feeling. Mm. To be an artist, you should feel free. You should think freely. We shouldn't just keep silence.